similarities you may have noticed between the women there and the women here because you know even being like i talk about a lot primarily the like uh black american women you know issues and surrounding our issues relationships and things of that nature but even like just scrolling through the internet i've been seeing some not it's been like in the uk i mean africa like i mean it's everywhere and i'm like damn y'all sound like us yeah and you all the way across the world <laughs> like, yeah. this is crazy like we've been dealing with a lot of the same issues yeah. so what did you notice what's what's the what's the term everybody's just di di divest is it divest uh-huh yeah get you a white man mm -hmm. i think i think african women are a lot more enthusiastic about that than african-american women i think for all intents and purposes y'all are more committed to the idea of a black family mm. to the idea of a black nation african women tend to be more committed to the idea of an easy life and if a white man could give me an easy life i'm gonna go with him whereas a lot of black women in my opinion in my experience they are they're willing to go down with the ship they're willing to hold on for boaz right mm. and boaz need to look chocolate you know with that being said um I appreciate African-American women for that. Um, I think that y'all, and I, and, I, and I talk about this all the time, as far as like the Pan-Africanist movement, it started here. And in as much as a lot of Africans are African and they were born on the continent, they were raised on the continent, the ethnocentric con consciousness that you would think would be a consequence of that isn't necessarily there. Mm. A lot of Africans are going to push back on that. A lot of Nigerians are going to push back on that. But the truth remains that motherfuckers is only Nigerian African on October 5th or in the club or, or, you know, when one of our artists wins a Grammy. But as far as understanding what's going on on the continent, understanding what's going on in the country and being committed to being part of that change, I don't think most Africans are actually interested unfortunately i don't think they know where to start which i don't blame them for i'm trying to figure it out myself but for us in general and for our women in particular it's more about getting as far away from that as possible and what about uh what about on the flip side of that for the men have you noticed um some of the similarities and differences between how men even how uh, men there handle women their women in between american men handling their women here one of the things that pisses me off is that um if you see if you see an, uh, uh, a white boy with a black woman, it's always like eights, nines, and tens. They they always bang mm. the top notch black women. If you see a black man with a white girl, it be the white girls that the white niggas don't even like. <laughs> and I mention that because a lot of our men are guilty of that. They come over here and they like the trailer trash white woman is still better. Than whatever I have back home or whatever, you know what I'm saying, reminds me of myself. Mm. Um, with that being said, there's a lot of there's a lot of cultural education necessary to really be able to dialogue with a, a black woman, particularly an African American, because there are a lot of layers you have to be able to work through and interact with to really get to the core of who she is and what y'all could be. And I think too often Africans who are coming from the continent, our education system deprioritizes knowledge of self. Mm. And it prioritizes STEM. So you'll see a lot of Africans be doctors, lawyers, engineers, the whole nine, but most of them don't really understand the dynamics of their culture, the reasons why Africa was colonized or or they can't even speak intelligently a lot of times about what their theories might be on our dysfunction, the root of it and how we undo it. Mm -hmm. Whereas over here, what I found is that there is a there is that ethnocentric movement of I am black, hear me roar my hair. I'm unapologetic about this, unapologetic about that, whereas Africans on the continent, and this is the difference between being colonized versus being enslaved. Because mm -hmm. colonization, you can make the argument, is worse only because it keeps you comf comfortable enough to not have to risk death to change things. Mm. Whereas y'all had it so bad that 
it's like give me liberty or give me death over here. Mm. There's a lot of Africans. It's like ah, shit is bad, but you know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm still able to function. I'm right. still able to live, right. and I think it reflects in how we think about ourselves and how we think about each other and how we interact with women over here. So like when we're having the submission conversation, a lot of Africans are like, you're supposed to be submissive off top. They don't start the conversation with why isn't she submissive off top? Mm. Now, somebody who understands the dynamic of the history of, you know, African-Americans in this country can put that in context and dialogue with that. Somebody who doesn't might just be like, I'm just gonna get me a white woman. In your experience, at least, I know that I don't want you to have to speak for everybody, but in your experience from your family mm -hmm. and stuff, like if you would have brought a white woman home, even if she was of quality, whatever the case may be, like how would that go about? And is there a difference between you bringing a white woman home and your sister bringing a white man home? <clears throat> Part of the reason why I said, you know, Sometimes I said, I'm, I'm ashamed to be Nigerian. <clears throat> and I actually want to talk about that in, in a documentary at some point in my life, is that I think a lot of our, a lot of our pride is a facade. Mm. I don't think it's real. I don't think it's deep. I don't think it's genuine. My mom has actually told me at, at some, some time ago, um, she would actually be more comfortable if I brought home a white woman instead of an african-american woman oh wow now i say it all the time black people are impossible to love unless you love black people and what, what i mean when i say that is like you have to make the decision to love black people and be willing to go through all the bullshit and sift through all the trauma and the whole nine to really yep. get to the you know sweet core or whatever because on face value, especially like you ever met a motherfucker from New York or something like on face value, it, it's not easy to love. Mm. It's, it's, it's aggressive. It's brash. It's, it's, it's masculine, you know? And if you don't take the time to like unpack that, yeah, it's like you should bring home a white woman instead of an African-American woman because they're hard to deal with. And then you, you also can't blame the Africans because part of the reason my mom felt that way she came from a completely different country, entered a workforce, and the issues that she had in that workforce came from people who look like her. Mm. You know, when she was working too much and fell asleep on the job, it wasn't the white ladies who reported her, it was the African American ladies. Mm. Part of that crabs in the bill. So her idea, which is reinforced by Christianity and white Jesus, it's reinforced by the fact that white places tend to be functional. Black places tend to be dysfunctional. It's reinforced by the fact that she doesn't have a full, robust understanding of African-American history. Her understanding was white people are just better people. Mm -hmm. So it's better you bring home a white woman than a black woman. Now, I had to take I had to learn and um, get to the point for myself where I was like, that's not an option. That's not, it's not an option for me to, you know, when people have the conversation, can you be pro-black and and uh, marry outside your race? For me, no, you can't be. I feel because like- ultimately, <laughs> go ahead. As I feel like I would have to agree, go ahead. <laughs> because ultimately I feel like we talk about love and companionship and marriage on some like ethereal fantasy shit. But ultimately who you decide to be your partner in life particularly as a man, is more a political decision than anything else. Mm. Not only is it political because you're building legacy and you're standing in solidarity to face the world with somebody, it's also political because that person is also a representative of you. Mm. And do you prefer how you look or do you prefer entering union with how somebody else somebody else looks because of a multiracial coalition or whatever the case may be. I care that I look good for black people as a black person. So I need a black person by my side as well. We do not play by the green. You fuck with the team. Might find your west in the creek. Crossing our teams. We don't never miss a beat.